Today, my friends, it is time to do a full challenge mode run of fractals. I want to do 100 CM, 99 CM Shadow Observatory, and then Nightmare, all with the same comp. Because I am fed up with people dying to this stuff. I am fed up with people not having the right composition. And today, you are all going to learn the true glory, the true, ultimate, unstoppable fractal composition. Okay, I want to see this. In the entire, so I want to go in the LFG. I don't want to see anything else except this. I, you know, you guys remember the old four necro one druid? Well, this is the new improved four necro one druid, right? I want to see double firebrand, double scourge, and then boom, you finish it off on the lacrov. We're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And uh, look, you better get ready for it, my friends. You'd better get ready. I am completely being serious here, by the way, guys. I, I actually think this is an amazing comp. Uh, and I kind of want to explain exactly why. Let's explain the comp. Why would you play this? Well, the reason you would play this is because, one, you have a healer. Healer is your ultimate backup. You don't actually need a healer in Fractals. If you play well, you don't need it at all. Like, you can actually just support a little bit. Your Firebrand can support. You have Lifesteal, of course, from the Rev. Uh, you have Barrier from the Necros. You're okay. But if something goes wrong, that's when the healer kicks in. The healer restabilizes you. It keeps you up. It makes sure that even if something doesn't go quite right, you never die. And that's very important in Pugs. Because if you're a Pug group, you care about efficiency. You want to win. You want to make sure that you get this done clean and as fast as possible without wiping, without any instability to save your time and optimize your farming and optimize your daily gold farming routine. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. So uh, th that's why you have the healer. The second firebrand is because actually I really like having a second sanctuary for break bars. And I actually also really like having the additional tome skills too. Because of course heal firebrand, uh, the really good stuff on firebrand actually comes in a lot of the utility it brings, which you don't necessarily need to be a healer for. So we're just double dipping on that. We're double dipping on our uh, Mantra of Solace for massive AoE uh, Aegis. So we have that twice over, so we have a lot more Aegis spam there too. And also for that third tome. The third tome, incredibly powerful, of course, uh, to generate more Aegis toughness, stability there, and even a little bit of handy resistance in, in the pinch there too with Condition Cleanse on the second one. All that combined with amazing burst damage and, of course, AoE cleave and sustain, uh, sustain damage from the Firebrand is going to be awesome here. The Revenant, guys, it's a rev. It's amazing in Fractals. It breaks all the bars. It provides great utility as well with all of the CC. A little bit of life still, bit of healing, all that awesome stuff. Can even boon it if you need to, although you won't need that with a double Scourge. And finally, guys, the Scourges. Scourge is broken. That's it. Right, that's all I've got to say about Scourge. It's incredibly overpowered. It's um, insane uh, because it does massive DPS, has 20k HP, provides awesome barrier uh, all over the place, and it just makes things, in general, an amazing, amazing time. I'm going to go ahead and drop down some food here. We want to get our power food down. Power food is on its way there. Power food and finally healing food. Ascended food, guys, very important for fractals. You definitely want to have it. If you don't, you are handicapping yourself. It's very, very cheap. Don't skimp out, and it will make your runs way, way easier. And you're going to see just how destroyed this is boss is going to be. We're actually running a power alack rev. If you have Condi, run it on this fractal, but not necessary. As you'll soon see here, it won't be necessary. We're actually going to uh, CC mid casual edition. We're going to actually be doing, um, we could, we actually have enough DPS for this, by the way, guys, to very easily um, CC uh, this. Wait, uh, dance for demons? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we're going to do a few little tech choices. I'm going to kind of run you guys through the tech choices that we're going to run here as well. Uh, so we're actually going to take Epidemic. We're going to be doing Dance with Demons here. So, you know, if you like that achievement, this is a great way to do it. We're just, instead of, we're going to have our Necromons take Epidemic from the start there, because that's going to help us out in the second phase a lot there. So here we go. Let's show you guys how unbelievably strong this is going to be here. Barrier, Aegis, Infinite Healing, Infinite DPS. And here we go. You could actually do Mid Strat, but, uh, sorry, Edge Strat. If you actually wanted to break sides with this uh, comp, you could do this. It's not something you see very often in pugs, but you could definitely do it with this. You'll have easily enough DPS. We aren't going to, though. We're going to do the much more common strat, which is where you actually break the boss in the middle. But if you wanted to, you could very easily go ahead and do this too. I'm actually playing Virtues right now. That is semi-unintentional, uh, but I actually like kind of like Virtues for kind of carrying a little bit harder there as well. You can play Radiance with this spell if you want to for a bit more damage, but having Virtues is actually quite a nice little bonus. You can use your Tomes more often, and it also gives you more CC uh, on your Sanctuary. So we're just going to CC very, very quickly here. As you can see, our damage is absolutely huge, so we're not even, you know, the break Bar is only just going to get broken there at the very end. So you can see that, guys, even if you play with a healer, you're not really losing 
losing that much. Obviously, if you play with an extra DPS, then things do get a lot faster, right? But there's no real need to do that, right? You can actually just play ultra safe here in all the fractals and go there. Because here, we do actually have a group of very experienced players. If you're pugging, if you're playing with new players, you won't necessarily have that, right? You won't necessarily have that level of experience and things may be a little bit more challenging. Your DPS also might be a little bit low, which can lead to a things being a little bit more challenging than if you're playing with an experienced team like this. But this is the general idea of it, guys. You can kind of see how this is all working here. We've got our white mantle pool device up, and we can just get back over there, get the healing, and just continuously DPS there. One player a little bit slow, slacking off as usual, but that's not going to be an issue there. We get that play healed up, and we're good to go. You can stand in front of this rock here, by the way, okay? Uh, and that will actually get the job done, and that means you don't get knocked back there. You don't have to waste a dodge doing that. And once again, we just go on to the next phase. This phase, we probably won't even... I'm not sure if we're even going to have time to break the bar, right? As insane as that sounds, it's just going to be so much DPS that I'm not sure if we even break this. It's going to be very close, actually. I feel like we're just, we're just barely going to get it, but you can see the boss is simply getting absolutely melted by our Scourges. As the healer, you can just pre-spread very easily. You don't need to really worry about that too much there, but look at these health bar guys, right? Like, no one is taking any kind of damage here. We just want to go for immediate CC, like, as much as we can. I don't think we're even going to get it. Uh, so, here, if you have this high DPS, guys, you do actually want to go ahead and break on the edge. It'll make, you know, will give you a little bit faster. But we're doing, uh, like I said earlier on in, in this uh, in this situation, guys, we're going for a bit more of a slightly more casual strat, right? Just to kind of give you, like, what might happen in a pug group, right? And that's the whole point of having this comp, guys, right? It just makes things so much easier. This is the ultimate cheese comp for Fractals. Nothing, we're talking tier 4s, CMs, even if you're new to the game. And that's one of the things that I was really careful about when thinking about this. And it's why I kind of like that second Firebrand. Like, that second Firebrand coming into play is just perfect for new players players because it just gives you that added safety net. Aegis is incredibly strong in Fractals in general. It's just so good that you really want to have that uptime. You want to have that capacity to just always be aware to be able to do that. I like to drop resistance here as well, guys. Right? Dropping the resistance uh, means that your players are probably going to hit by the tornadoes, right? But they can just ignore that effect uh, because of the resistance. Resistance will still shut down that slow completely. Here is the hardest phase to one burn, but we should be able to get it very easily, I think. Another great thing about the Necros is they actually help keep up Might. Your Rev is probably helping keep up Might, but um, now that you actually have the, uh, you know, if you have the uh, the Necros, you pretty much guarantee it. The Might uptime is just simply amazing from that. It really, really is. And you can see that we're just going to get a very, very clean burn, playing incredibly safe builds. The boss is going to phase while she comes back. There we go. We're not GGing here because we're going to go for an achievement, so our Necromancers are going to be using Epidemic in. This is where Necro really kicks in, guys, okay? This is where Necro... Necro fully activates and just gets silly because this fractal is something that a lot of players struggle with, right? And this is why I'm, I'm doing this on stream. I want everyone to see this because this is actually one of the pieces of content that really roadblocks players, right? It really, really roadblocks players. And Necromancer just destroys it. So the thing that tends to go wrong in pug groups is that the CC fails. So at 66 and 33%, you have to break ads. If you don't break the ads, they explode and kill you. Now, the thing is with this is that you can get around that using Epidemic. You can actually just kill the ads instead of breaking them. And Epidemic, two Necros will actually do that. So if you have two Necromancers um, in, uh, in this phase, it utterly trivializes the encounter. You can focus all your CC on breaking the boss. You don't have to worry about saving CC cooldowns or anything fancy or big brain like that. Your necromancers just have to press one button. And that's it. And look, I love one button gameplay, guys. Don't we all? And you're about to see a whole lot of that. So prepare for that, my friends. Prepare for the one button gaming because this is going to be one of the most disgusting ways to handle 100 CM. And I really do appreciate like not having to care about uh, not really worrying whatsoever uh, about uh, you know looking at you know looking at all the regular break bars, you can simply go very very hard immediately break this stuff here. Don't worry about it whatsoever, and you'll easily have enough DPS. You'll easily have the sustain to break through this. And you can see the necromancers like with that exposed debuff, it, the damage is just absurd, nearly pushing it to 66 already. Okay, and it's almost going to certainly going to go to the middle there. And we can just epidemic now. The one thing you have to watch out if you're a necro player, right? This is like a, a mistake I actually do see a, a surprisingly a lot uh, is actually. Actually, CC, uh, using Epidemic too early. You want to make sure that it's actually vulnerable first because the Sorrow is actually invulnerable at the start. So you want to Epidemic about now, right? 
Okay, and then that will actually just straight up kill it. So there we go. We should be seeing the epi there as well. Okay, a little bit slow on the epi, but it should be enough to kill it. As you can see, there's the kill. There we go. I used the CC. I was a little bit worried about that failing. So even if um even if things do go uh you know if things do go a little bit badly. I right, make sure over that, and we actually might fail this CC as a result of that, right? Okay, it's never easy. Uh, so the Necro is actually epied a little bit uh, too slow there, uh, but I think we are still going to get the right. We still get it. So yeah, as you can see, plenty of bonus CC. So that was very, very bad execution. That's perfect actually to show on stream there, guys, right? Because you can really see that even if things go badly, you have so much left over in this comp that it simply does not matter, right? You'll, you'll be able to get away with it, no problem. We want to go ahead and grab this tether here. Thank you, hello, boss. Can you give? Thank you. There we go. Now let's go ahead and get the epidemics going down and we should be able to see that killed quite nice i want to give the tether away here there we go and there's the epi the both ads are now down and that's going to be the boss there for 100 cm even though we didn't do it right it was still insanely easy it got completely destroyed and oh my team trying to grief me at the end there i always appreciate a little bit of griefing as it does with demons are on there too guys there is the achievement sorted out with absolutely no issue and just again to reiterate this works everywhere like this if you want to have like a go-to composition for fractals right now it is this right double firebrand rev double scourge you're going to destroy tier fours where you need to cleave down ads and survive because the barrier just synergizes so well with the heal brand even if people get pressured the barrier is there the heal brand heals you up while you're buried you have that amazing synergy uh, amazing cc of course with uh, easy to take sanctuary loads of ages with retreat and of course with the double mantra on the firebrand uh, you know, and it's just across the board, pretty much unstoppable. Uh, even if you are new to the game or relatively new to fractals or new to you know, how challenge modes, challenge modes uh, might work, you're just going to destroy this. Like it will absolutely get obliterated the entire time. It really, really will. For this, guys, I'm going to be changing my skills up a little bit here. Uh, you know, for, for this, you want to kind of keep things, uh, you want to keep things sorted out. We're actually going to play Radiance here. You can play, I'll, I'll just de kind of demonstrate what's going on with Radiance here. Uh, so with Radiance, you have this pretty cool ability to share signets, essentially. Uh, you just go ahead and share your, um, signet around, so you get a lot more condition damage spike here. And you get that passively on your F1. So we can, uh, we can do the same with our Bane signet to share power damage. You can even take signet of Wrath if you wanted to, but we're going to take some CC to help break through Scorvald. Burst CC there, of course, is going to be absolutely fantastic. It really, really is. Let's get a bit of a full-on pre-stack there and then get rock and rolling. So the goal with this guy, I mean, this fractal is um, the first two bosses are honestly not too bad, but here we just want to break as quick as we can, of course, and then get our Burser. So then we use our skill here. You can see the Signet of Wrath gets shared out, and that is going to further enhance the burst capacity of our Condi. And you can see that, yeah, oh, Scourge has no burst damage. Well, okay, not anymore, okay? Not anymore. Scourge is is just crazy right now. It really is. And the good thing about having the double necro is that it actually frees up your rev. Like normally with when you have the boon, uh, no, you know, boon overload here, right? Uh, and no pain, no gain. Uh, you would actually end up having, you know, the boons uh, be applied to the boss. But necromancers will actually just make short work of that with their uh, high corruption output, meaning that your rev can actually spec into Jalus, right? Okay, your rev can go ahead and spec into Jalus, making things a little bit easier, applying additional stability, while the necros actually handle the boon corruption. And it's also AoE too. And this is great, because it means if you've got all the ads, like getting loads of their boons up there, fantastic. It's not really an issue whatsoever, because of course you have massive uptimes uh, of the boon rip there in an AoE fashion there as well right very very handy you can say oh yeah okay i, I you know I, we can see that you know my uh say look classic pug experience guys uh the uh <laughs> Our Rev, in fact, is still going to be playing with Malix, but you know what? He, like, the thing is, guys, he could be. He could be playing Jalus, right? And that's the important thing, okay? He could be. I'm just going to save my stability here, guys, when we go back to the final boss. There we go. We're going to save that and just spam that out as much as we can. And then we can now go ahead and initiate our burst. Get that additional comedy spike there. Share the power damage. It's not going to be another break by that. Apply more stability there. Withstand your ground. And that should be pretty much the end of Scorvald there. As you can see, it's like, you know, everyone's fine. Barry, we actually have capped on barrier right now. No way that boss could touch us there. The ads got destroyed very, very quickly. Boss phase, super, super clean. No issue there. Totally clean. Totally free. There it is. Simple as that, my friends. Yeah, again, like, you know, you can do a little bit of optimization here. Like, you know, the Rev can obviously play Shiro here. I can apply a lot of stability. So the Rev can just basically just go full pump here. Just go for full damage to further increase our group DPS. You do want to do that. Like, when you have a healer, guys. Like, when you've got a healer going on here, guys. Like, you do want to play as aggressive. The, the whole point of playing healer in Fractals is that everyone else can go YOLO. 
right? Because if you have everyone playing very defensively, you're obviously going to lose DPS. And that's why I really like stuff like Firebrand and Scourge in Fractals, is because they come, they are very, very aggressive, but they come loaded with loads of defensive utility, right? And that defensive utility manifests in Barrier, which, you know, is just, again, part of Scourge's kit, even to a certain extent, part of the DPS rotation, right? And then also the Firebrand has, again, instant cast Aegis, so no DPS loss to use that, and a very, very minor DPS loss to use the Tomes. Uh, and then you just use them, and you can support your team even while playing DPS. And that sort of thing is very, very powerful indeed to have that. Like, that sort of utility is just so, so strong. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and play uh, three Scourges as well. If you really want to go crazy, that might even make 100 CM a little bit easier because you're not going to get one shot. Although I actually really like the Aegis. I think uh, Aegis is very good on 100 CM, actually. So I would still recommend the second Firebrand, in my opinion. But you could also run Triple Scourge if you desire to do that. Like, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in this. I think the real core is the two is the real core is double scourge, heel brand, alacra, right? Like heel brand, alacra is like the, the ultimate wombo combo there. Obviously, it's amazing. Uh, to run this just to solidify everything uh, completely. But there's plenty of wiggle room here, guys. Like, if you want to go ahead and run a third Scourge or only one of them, that's fine. Bear in mind, if you run one Scourge, you'll actually have to CC the ads. Um, you know, you'll, you'll actually have to CC the ads here. So on this fight, it's kind of the same thing. I actually like stability here because there's actually a fair few knockbacks around here. So I think going with this, that's good. You can just like immediately cleave down this stuff here. And then we want to go ahead and put our reflects up on the boss and then just try and break the boss as quick as we possibly can. I'm going to delay here and get a second reflect and then go into the tone one to just clear that out trigger our burst and that will just be the boss dead i mean like not gonna lie guys uh if you're looking at the challenge modes uh for 99 and uh and 98 they are going to die pretty fast uh, these days like they don't exactly <laughs> survive super well uh <laughs> They are very, very low HP with all of the damage and power creep that we have access to here. So you really don't have to worry about that. We can just go ahead and block this attack there. If you have stability, you can use it to completely negate that. Other than that, just don't look at the boss here. Get ready to kill the add and just rinse and repeat, right? Rinse and repeat. Go ahead and get our burst off there. Can pop stab there once again. Get that kill. There we go. And we just go ahead and move to the boss. Uh, the, I think the Rev is actually... Yeah, the Rev is in the bomb, I believe, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this. So we just go ahead and replace that real quick. But it's actually too late. The boss is pretty much already phased. I'm just replacing. There we go. They get the phase, and that's job done. Again, if things do take a little bit longer in your pug groups, guys, because bear in mind, you may not have this level of DPS in your pug, keep executing, keep healing, make, focus on the mechanics, and just play uh, nice and safe. Like, use that barrier, use that utility, and you'll be just fine. Uh, I think a lot of players have difficulty with fractals, but there's no need to. Approach it with the right composition, the right mentality, and you are going to farm. So... Here we go. We're just going to go ahead and repeat. I'm just going to use stability and an Aegis here. And that will actually prevent the knockback too. So you can just tank that. Great for carrying new players here. Because a lot of players die to the laser beams here. All these AoEs. Just give them an Aegis and they won't. Right. And now I'm going to give stability here again to deny that attack. Kill this ad. Get our reflects up over there. And then move on to it over there, guys. So let's see. Uh, is it the rev? Okay. It's not the rev now. So Andreas is going to go ahead and grab that. We can just use this and then finish with the signet. Should have used that a little bit earlier. Do that earlier than me. I'm a noob, guys. What can I say? Going for another, like, no death run here as well uh for leaves nearby we can just take epi here guys scourge can epi. you can even bounce on it so you, if you want to do this like, like bouncing is perfectly fine here uh we don't really need to take some cc here i'm actually trying to take even more stability i actually like stability here a lot um because it means you can um it means you can actually block uh you can block in um and you can basically ignore all the knockbacks on this fight so i might just go and take more stab uh just to make sure there but uh it doesn't really matter honestly well you can take some bonus cc just to be sure right i'm just going to pre-stack here real quick oh never mind okay pre-stack denied Okay, that's fine, though. We don't really need it, right? It's not necessary. And you can just see here that we can just Epidemic that, right? Normally, the Rev would handle this, but we're just going to go ahead um, and uh, have our Epidemic player go over there. Move over there with this. Get in there for the bomb. And just continue playing here as well. Uh, remember to use your Action Key for CC. It's such a mistake I see a lot of pugs make. Like, a lot of pugs seem, like, mildly unaware that you can actually CC the bar, right, with this. Just get a bit more CC there. Not so necessary to have that uh, Signet there, but doesn't really matter. Get that bus. Another great feature of Necromancer here, guys, is actually Epidemic here. Because a lot all the time these ads will actually survive but believe me they won't now you, you can actually reflect uh, this, by the way, guys. If you have Tome 3 up, you can reflect that attack there and neutralize it. You won't be able to do that every single time, though, particularly if you have good DPS. If you have good DPS, you might be... Uh, sorry, uh, kind of like medium DPS, you'll be able to get away with it. Otherwise, you won't. Okay, there's a knockback there, but there you go. 
It's going to be CC time on the ad very shortly. Aegis that uh, Daze attack there. And that is the end of that. You want to try and avoid using cooldowns here a lot of the time on this stage of the fight. Because you actually kind of want to save it for the final phase to stabilize it. So I'm not going to use Tome 3 here. It's going to survive it using our action key. Bear in mind, guys, the action key is an invulnerability. And that's very, very powerful to have that invuln there. Final break bar here. Get everyone healed up. And there we go. Get our burst. Just spam everything pretty much because the boss is just going to die, right? Like the boss won't even be able to survive much longer. He's going to recover, but just barely, right? Uh, and then what we're going to go ahead and do is just go into our third tome, stabilize it, get the reflect up, spam some stability so no one dies. And there you go. Simple as that. And there you go. That's 99 CM. Definitely a bit of a tough one, actually, particularly if you're new to it. But run this comp and it won't be. It'll actually be very, very easy. It will be completely free. Nice. There it is. And now it's the final thing here. It's the finale. It's going to be this one. The old classic. The first challenge round. One of the most loved instances in the entire game here. And you'll see that this comp will work here too. Right? Like it's going to work here just fine. Like the, uh, in fact, it will probably work here uh, just as well as anywhere else. The, the one fight where it may not be like absolutely god tier. It's actually going to be Mama here. Um, because this fight is so bursty. That in general, I think you're still going to find power over outperforming here. Uh, and we don't actually have an extreme amount of CC and we may not even have, a, you know, not quite enough to elicit quite the same level of burst uh, that you actually need to get, kind of get this fight done quickly, but it will be no issue. And in fact, this combo is going to be great for pugs, guys, because the thing about pugging this is that often Mama will be moving around, she'll be standing in AoEs, and things are going to get very, very messy. Uh, and we have loads of range, right? We have pure range damage. So having a lot of range damage here is actually very, very strong. Like, having the range DPS is fantastic um, because... It means that even if things get a little bit messy, it really doesn't matter whatsoever. We're just going to go ahead and get this CC. Hopefully, we've got Aegis, so we actually fail the CC, but never mind. Never mind. Do we get the clean burst? We actually don't quite get it, but we get good RNG there, so we don't get punished whatsoever. There we are. Continue to CC this thing here as well. And that's kind of getting down to business. That ad is going to die pretty fast. Of course, Condi again, guys, because you do have a slightly slower ramp up. Can actually be a little uh, not ideal. Can try and age us that as much as we can. CC the boss once again. Get that CC. Get another share out there. Oh, beautiful timing. Oh, look at that boss just melt. Oh, my goodness me. There you go. Finish that off. One more Wrath Signet there. And the boss is done. Easy. Boom. One thing that's also worth noting that's actually really useful on some of these fractals, guys, is that Agony uh, doesn't affect barrier, right? So you can actually still barrier yourself up very effectively, even if you have Agony. And that actually makes doing these cap events much easier. For example, if Nico like, uses some barrier here, you'll notice that he actually gets the full amount because Agony prevents you from healing. Although it is worth noting, guys, that Firebrand actually heals so much that even with Agony, it heals a lot, right? You can see there, we actually heal a good amount uh, onto our Firebrand here, even though we actually had Agony. Again, like this is like the a fractal that is very, very burst oriented. So Syx is not going to be amazing here because you know we, we're Condi and it involves a lot of bursting, but you'll see that it will perform just fine, right? This is not going to be, I think, you know, in terms of like, an average kill time. This is still going to be a fast, you know, for, certainly for a pug group, it will be a fast kill here. Even with a full Condi comp, just the fact that Exposed doubles the damage, being able to break that bar is still going to be very, very powerful indeed. It's going to be great utility to get the job done there. And we're going to have good damage, right? You know, Firebrand bursts quite nicely. Even Scourge bursts surprisingly well, actually. You know, it's um, certainly Firebrand has the edge there for bursting, but Scourge is so good now. Like, with the way Torment is, Torment being so strong and bosses can, you know, seldom actually moving, just means that Necromancer is just devastating it really is guys it is devastating everywhere it is just brutal what you want to do is you send the heal brand uh and you want to send the heal brand and the alak rev to the same one and then one dps to each of the other ones right that means that you'll kill them all vaguely at the same time right so i'm just going to go to the southern one andres is going to come with me and then all the other dps is going to go ahead and spread it you can mark this with personal waypoints that's kind of like the uh, the pug etiquette to do that so everyone knows what the hell's going on just gonna finish that one off there's one left and it's dead there we go just kind of heal through this and we can uh, go ahead and give some big memes there. What you want to do there is basically do what I did, except better. Uh, you want to just uh, go ahead and uh, drop down your Signet Rev right at the start of that phase there. Uh, because he actually has exposed there. So you get a huge amount of value out of that. Because kind of give some uh, big memes here. Give Aegis. Hopefully that doesn't spawn any ads. Okay, we actually spawn a whole bunch, but... That honestly doesn't matter that much, right? Like, it'll be fine. It won't be an issue. Like, they're all going to get destroyed anyway. Like, our Necromancer will be able to cleave them down very easily. So, even though we kind of flip that a little bit, it's not going to be relevant, my friends. Okay, the, wait. Oh, oh, guys, wait. Don't you actually make sure it dies there? Okay, it's almost feeding there a little bit. Bit of a feeding frenzy. Okay, but you can just cleanse everyone up. 
And this should pretty much be the final CC. Get that burst. Get the Signet of Wrath applied. And that is one dead snake right there. Bit messy. But again, it's rather the point, right? Like the whole point here is that it doesn't have to be perfect. This is a comp that thrives in imperfection. It thrives, okay, um, in, in having difficulties, right? And overcoming and smoothing out your runs. If you are a pug, what is your goal? Okay, what is your goal, my friends? Your goal is indeed to uh, provide a lot of value, provide a lot of content, and prevent yourself from dying and getting the job done quickly and efficiently. That is what it's all about, guys, okay? Power Signa uh, is Sag. It actually isn't Sag, okay? Uh, it's still going to be useful here as well. Like, because it will give you, like, a good bit of burst CC. You can take Signa of Wrath if you want, but as you can see, we're actually a little bit low on crowd control. You could actually take both if you wanted to uh, pretty easily here. Uh, but I don't think you really need to do that, right? Like, it will get you a bit more damage. But uh, again, like, the goal here is not to kill it as fast as possible. The goal here is to actually make it as high win rate as possible. I think having the extra Aegis from Retreat is actually quite handy, particularly later on, guys. There are a lot of uh, knockback attacks here uh, that will get you pretty good. That will get you pretty damn good a little bit later on. That's not Signet of Wrath. Okay, uh, no, it isn't. But the Signet of Wrath is on the F1. Ah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that maybe people are, don't know that, um, that, you could, that that's how that works. So I need to, I guess I'll explain it again. So the Signet of Wrath, guys, is coming from my F1. Like when I get an attack off with my F1, you'll see here, you notice that I get a Signet of Wrath shared, right? And that is increasing the condition damage. So I'm still going to be buffing the team there. Obviously, again, you could run both if you wanted to, but I don't think that's actually necessary. Like I think, it's, I think the value of Bane Signet in the CC is actually very high. Uh, I actually like the CC a lot. I think it's a very, very powerful effect to have. Uh, and, you know, you'd be a fool to not add a little bit of extra CC into your comp. We can just keep Aegising everyone here. He's going to go for the suction very soon. And we can just block pretty much every attack. And there is the phase, guys. There we go. Why does F1 give Wrath, though? It's because of this trait here. Uh, Wrath of Justice. It means that when you proc your F1, you uh, immobilize the target and cast the Signet. And that actually gets shared by perfect inscriptions. Right? That's kind of funny, huh? Super cool interaction there, actually. Really fun uh, interaction that the lesser version also gets shared by the trait. So that means you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You can play some CC, buff your Alacrev or other power classes that you might have in your group. So you, maybe you have like a, a Weaver or a Soul Beast or a Dragon Hunter or something like that. And you also have the ability uh, to buff your condition classes, right? Again, Firebrand, Scourge, all that kind of good stuff. And that means you essentially get the double value there. In this phase, you actually want to spam a lot of stab. Uh, so just go into Tome 3 here, save Tome 3, just spam everything here, guys, right? Just go crazy, go big, give the boons out there, and finish the job. See what's quite nice, because these little ads, they actually knock you back. Uh, so you can try and sidestep them, but your team might not do that, because there are a bunch of scrubs. But there it is. Uh, insanely clean, insanely free. Not perfect play by me by any stretch of the imagination. But honestly, um, you know, it's never going to be perfect uh, in a pug group there. You know, like, I'm talking to the stream at the same time, trying to explain what's going on. And, you know, like, obviously, I'm experienced. So, I'm, you know, I've got, I've got to tone it down a little bit, because that is the point. I, I'm not really a big fan of showing, like, perfect gameplay, because perfect gameplay is not real gameplay. Um, you know, in, in a, in actual an actual group, it's going to be complete bloody mess. It's going to be like people like throwing their bodies all over the place, feeding, inting, dying, right? All over the place, right? And even though I didn't play perfectly, you know, like I could be way better with my times on my signets, right? Uh, with skill usage could be better. But that's not the point. The point is, is that even with those imperfections, it was totally free, right? Like it just got demolished, right? The content had no chance. had no hope of stopping us there. And that was the goal of doing this because I really wanted to show you guys uh, how to do it. So with that... Take this knowledge, my friends, this forbidden, the dark arts, right? The dark arts of uh, a firebrand and scourge. And go, my friends, to the LFG, to the guild groups, to the pugs. Okay? Get in there right now and demolish. Destroy these fractals. Leave none standing. Farm your rewards, get your achievements, and get those kill proofs so you can... <laughs> Stop getting gate kept out of groups. So there you go. That, my friends, is how you farm fractals insanely hard.